about 29 miles north of Prague in the country of the Czech Republic sits a castle. Now, of course, castles in Western Europe as well as Eastern Europe are not rare. However, most historians know what each castle's purpose was for. They know who lived there. They know who owned the land. The only problem with this castle in the Czech Republic is that historians aren't so sure what this castle's purpose was. This castle is not by any trade routes. There's no water around it. It offers itself no protection. And in fact, it's in a forest that's so dense, it wasn't even good for hunting. The only logical explanation for this castle comes through folklore. That this castle wasn't built to keep people or things out, but rather it was built to keep something in. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. We also have a Patreon if you want to join to help support the channel. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today we're going to be talking about Huska Castle. castles can often seem magical. Even though most of the castles we have in Europe, we are aware of who owned them and what they were built for. However, even knowing this, there's always a little bit of a mystery as to what happens inside these huge castles. For example, in a previous episode, we talked about Glam's Castle in Scotland and all of the mystery surrounding Glam's Castle. In my opinion, Glam's Castle, a bit like Huska Castle, is not just a castle, but a portal. And for those who have been joining us on David Zublik's channel, we are going to be going into a deeper look at portals this week on his show. However, for this episode, we're just going to look at the mys mysteries around Huska Castle itself. Now, there are th some things that we do know about Huska Castle. For example, Huska Castle was built by Ottokar II of Bohemia. Now, Ottokar lived in the late Middle Ages. His reign was from 1253 to 1278. So we're looking at a Gothic style castle. Now, again, as I said in the introduction, there was no kitchen, there's no waterway, there's no fortress. It's just kind of there. And so a lot of people think that there is a possibility that Ottokar may have built this castle as an administrative office. However, given the legend and given all the weird things that continue to happen at Huska Castle today, I highly doubt that. Ottokar II of Bohemia was, in all accounts, a very strong and good ruler. He was considered to be the Iron and Golden King. Now, Ottokar, a bit like Henry VIII in England, was the second born son of his father. So Ottokar spent most of his life preparing for a life in the priesthood, as did Henry VIII. You see, it was usually the first born son that would inherit the kingdom. Now, as we know from the British family, there's always this saying that you wanna have an heir and a spare, because back in those days, life was more fragile and it was common for young people or kids to die. And as fate would have it, Otto Carr's older brother, the heir apparent to the throne, died in 1247. Now the story says that Otto Carr at first did not want to take the throne. He wasn't happy. He was a bit of a, a rascal. He liked to drink and he liked to go to war. And apparently he did fight in some of the crusades. And in fact, through Otto Carr's mother's line, he was connected to the Holy Roman Empire, and we have spoken a lot about bloodlines and divine right. So Ottokar himself, if you're looking at his bloodline, comes from a very, very powerful family. 
But nonetheless, fate stepped in as it often does in these bloodlines where people have to take their divine right, their dharma. And in 1261, Ottokar had his coronation in Prague to become the king of Bohemia. Now there is some interesting history between Ottokar and his father. Apparently at some point Ottokar went to war against his father and then his father retaliated. Anyway, I'm not going to get into detail of that whole relationship, but there is a lot there if you are a history buff. Ottokar, being a very strong warrior, was able to expand his family's empire. In fact, he expanded all through Austria down to the Adriatic Sea. Now again, as I said, it does seem like Ottokar was a very strong and a very good ruler. In fact, he ruled by law. He wasn't rogue. He really tried to follow the law set up by the empire. And it is said that Ottokar really did not only care about his family's power, but also cared about the people within his territory. So as I said in the introduction, Huska Castle is about 29 miles outside of Prague. And we do have it on record that in the 9th century, around the year 878 AD, long before Ottokar, it is written that the earth broke in this area. Basically, the earth broke and a hole appeared where Huska Castle now stands. Now this hole, according to legend, according to these old documents, the people of the surrounding town said that these demonic entities started flying out of the hole. And these demonic entities would come and harass their cattle, their produce, even harass the people. Now, obviously, if we look at this earth breaking with modern eyes, what probably happened was an earthquake. Now, I don't know about the ley lines in the Czech Republic, but it does seem that a lot of these really powerful castles, these portals, are around a particular place in the earth where there are ley lines. We spoke about this in the Glam's Castle episode where we said even in the body of the earth, there are places of energy that can be tapped into. Now the people that lived around this hole now in the earth that claimed where these entities were coming out of the hole and terrorizing the village and terrorizing these people, they claimed that this was now the gateway to hell and it's still known as the gateway to hell. Now, of course, for many centuries, the people of the area tried to do whatever they could to cover the, the hole. They apparently tried to fill it with dung. They tried to do all this stuff, but they could never quite find the bottom of the hole to be able to fill it up to close it off. And so then Ottokar came around and he decided that he was gonna do something about it. I mean, what's the point in having such a strong and large empire if you have this one area of your empire that that's being affected by this endless hole and, and produce is being hurt by these entities and people are terrified, something had to be done. And so legend states that before anything was done, before the coal was actually covered, the king offered a prisoner on death row he said, you know, if, if you're willing to be lowered down into the hole to tell us what's in there, we will pardon your sentence. And so, of course, this prisoner was like, sure thing. I mean, being on death row isn't fun today. Can you imagine back then? Their methods of execution were quite gruesome. I probably would have done the same thing. And so they took this prisoner and they lowered him down on a rope. At first, it was very quiet as he was being lowered. Then all of a sudden, they could hear this guy screaming bloody murder. They pulled the guy out of the hole and he had aged about 30 years. His hair was gray and he had wrinkles all over his face. He talked about seeing these entities and then after the whole ordeal, he died two days later, not of execution, but of his own craziness from this said hole. Now, I'm not saying that these half-human, half-animals really exist. However, there are some weird art sculptures that belong to the Podestas here in modern times that 
mimic this. And of course, we've all heard the legends that down in these deep tunnels, even today, these elite group of people are experimenting with life. So anyway, back to the 1200s and Ottokar II, obviously there was something really crazy happening with this hole in the earth. And so Ottokar decided that he would build a chapel on top of this hole. This was the first part of this castle that was built. Now this chapel was called St. Michael's Chapel after Archangel Michael. Now anyone who is familiar with our beloved archangels know that Michael is a very important angel and he tends to battle demonic forces. So it doesn't seem peculiar that this was St. Michael's or Archangel Michael's chapel. Now the funny thing is, is inside the chapel you see beasts that are archers but that they are left handed archers. Now this goes back to an urban legend that's been around for a very long time that people who are left handed are demonic. In fact, my grandfather, my dad's dad, my paternal grandfather was born left handed in, in the 1900s. He just recently passed away at in his late 80s, this is not ancient times, obviously. And when he went to school, he told us that they had to train him to be right-handed because it was not considered good to be left-handed. So this whole idea of the left-handed people being demonic, which in my opinion is not true at all, has been around for a very, very, very long time. And so these beasts that are drawn inside the chapel are shown to be demonic by the fact that they are beasts and they are using their left hand. So this chapel now covers up the entrance to the hole. People today who visit the chapel say that you can still hear screaming coming from the floorboards and sometimes you will see entities coming up through the floor. Funny, some people get married in this chapel. <laughs> Now the rest of the castle came later on and there is a courtyard and it's interesting because the courtyard is built with these balconies facing into the courtyard, not out to the city. So again, it's like they're trying to keep something inside the castle itself. There are a lot of windows outside of the castle, but the windows lead to nothing. There's just a wall behind them. It's like, again, they don't want anything coming out of this actual building. Now again, as I've said throughout the video, people today still see beings, half human, half animal beings coming out of the castle. They even see ghosts. Apparently there's a ghost of a headless horse that runs towards the castle with blood coming out of its throat. And there are these chain gang ghosts that they'll see of, of these humans chained together, holding their heads or super injured. Super creepy, right? Now, apparently there's one normal ghost though, and this is on the very top floor. And this is the ghost of a woman who wears a long white gown. And all people see is her just peering down from the highest floor. Again, apparently she's the one normal ghost in the whole castle. Now the absolute creepiest part of this castle to me is the cellar. And they call the cellar Satan's office. They do have a throne down there that's made out of horns and super creepy. And they say that Satan will appear in front of the throne. He'll materialize and then he'll just walk up the stairs. Now they haven't discovered all the mysteries about this castle. In fact, most things about the castle are still very much a mystery including all of the paranormal activity. But about five or six years ago, they found another room that was under the courtyard that had not been found before. Now we all know that during World War II, the Nazi party was very interested in the occult. It seemed that Hitler and his cronies believed that this Aryan race had a 
bigger part to play in the creation of mankind than had previously been taught. If you go deeper into the study of what they believed, it very much lines up with the idea of divine right and divine bloodlines. And as we now are starting to see through things like Operation Paperclip, there is a possibility that World War II never really ended, that instead some of these Nazi players were just moved to America. And again, there is speculation that some of our presidents, some of our powerful people are actually descendants of these Nazi scientists and politicians. It's sad, but it seems to be true. But with that being said, the Nazis occupied a lot of different castles and places, obviously during their horrible, terrible, awful reign. And Huska Castle was one of them. Now again, Huska Castle, the whole legend around it is this idea of this portal, this gateway to hell. Did the Nazis know something about the castle that we don't know? What type of experimentation were they running in the castle? Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of information about what was happening when the Nazis occupied Huska. All we do know is that three bodies were found, three bodies of the Nazi party, at Huska Castle, and they had been killed execution style. We might not have much information on what the Nazis were doing at Huska, but we do have information on what the Nazis were doing at other castles in Europe that also seem to be a portal. And that's coming next time. Thank you guys so much for sitting around through another story. Let me know your comments. If you've been to Huska Castle, let me know. I really want to go. I've always wanted to go to Prague anyway. Prague seems like a fantastic city. Also, I have linked a website, Huska Castle's official web website. It's, it's obviously not in English, but you could probably hit tra the translator button to figure out what the information is. It is open to the public. Maybe not right now in this... Um, global situation we've got going on, but in normal circumstances, it is open to the public. Um, apparently you have to drive a car and you have to park it a bit away and walk up to it. That's another thing too. Sometimes if a car gets too close to the castle, it won't start, which is very interesting, but there is information about tours and all that kind of stuff. And again, don't forget to tune in on Tuesday night with David Zublik's channel where we start to look at this idea and we go a little bit deeper into these, these portals around the world. Also, if you aren't following us on Instagram, please go ahead and give us a follow at Esoteric Atlanta. I'm going, the bigger our channel gets, the more I'm gonna start trying to involve you guys in this process of storytelling. And the best way for me to get feedback from you guys is through Instagram. So please give me a follow. All right, thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music and Todd Roderick for being our editor. I will talk to you soon. Bye.